topic here, ladies and gentlemen. Very interesting, and a lot of you guys probably are like, GIF, National League MVP, it's not really that much to talk about. Have you guys seen what's going on with Mookie Betts, Ronald Acuna Jr., Matt Olson? It, it has been crazy in terms of NL MVP, but there's only two. There's only two. Acuna and Mookie. That's it. That's who's going to headline the National League MVP. So, I have the stats. Now, I could be wrong about this because when I wrote them down, it was a while ago. So, if anyone would want to look that up for me, I would appreciate it. But, we're going to start with Ronald Acuna Jr. 337 batting average. That's fourth in all baseball. 30 homers. That is second. Hold on. Let me let me find this. Let me find this real quick. I had it written down on Facebook. Let me just find this real quick. Because I'm looking at this on my notes, and I think I got it wrong. But anyways. Okay. So... 337 batting average, fourth in the MLB, second behind Freddie Freeman, 30 homers, that's 12th in the MLB, and then 992 OPS, that's fifth in all of baseball. By the way, here's the comparison with Mookie. Acuna leads all of baseball in runs, 120 to 116. I'm sure things have changed. I mean, this was September 1st. Things have changed. He leads all of baseball in OBP, 419 to Mookie's 411. Leads all of baseball in hits, 181 to Mookie's 158. Mookie Betts, 317 average. That's fourth in the NL behind Arias, Freeman, and Acuna. 38 homers, that's third in the NL behind Olsen and Alonzo. And then... He's second in RBIs, 98 to 83, first in OPS, and then Acuna is third in OPS. So who wins NL MVP, ladies and gentlemen? To me, and I also forgot to add that Acuna is the first 30 home run, 60 stolen bases guy, but I really shouldn't have to tell you that. To me, it's Acuna. I understand Mookie Betts is having a great month. But I think Mookie is going to be the guy to get it, even though I think Acuna is more deserving. And I've said this for a while, Justin, you can vouch. When we were at the Tigers-Braves game, I said that that guy is going to be the MVP. But I think they're going to give it to Mookie. Mookie had a really good month. He led in every offensive category for the month of August. So we'll see what happens going forward. With that, all right, Patrick Kane, do I want him? You know, if the money's right, yes. Here's why I want Patrick Kane. I think he would be another offensive weapon. Him and DeBrinkett would be great, be the reunion again. But would he want to come to Detroit? I don't think so. I just don't think that he would be willing to be a wing. Now, I understand the brinkets there. Would he be a great fit? Yes. But I think other teams he's going to look at and say, you know what, I don't want to be here. The one thing that pisses me off in... Not a lot of people are talking about it, and I could be wrong. I mean, I know hockey, but I don't know, like, freaking elite-level hockey where someone studies it, writes it down. Like, I'm not that guy. I'm literally your average hockey fan. But tell me I'm wrong about this, and I am going to say I am. Who the hell else on defense do the Wings have besides Sider? Like, top 15 to 20 defensemen in the NHL. Who they have? They have no one. Besides Mo Sider. No one of the top 15 to 20. 
That's just my opinion on that. Yeah, and it's terrible. Because here's what you're essentially doing. You're basically saying, alright, we have no one to go with you and develop you for the future. At all. It's just like, alright, because I would like another top level player to go with him to develop him. So, we'll see what happens going forward, but... Bro, you need to, man. You need to get on this podcast. But, um... Yeah, I think he's going to be good. I literally think that Mo Sider is going to have a better year than he did last year. He was off to a slow start last year, but... We'll see what happens this year. How would we do it? I mean, always just research. I mean, I've seen where you have someone has a camera and the other person has a camera and they just blend in. There's a thing on Twitch called Special Guest, which you just have your camera and then I would have mine like you see now. And then we just go about it that way. But all right, continuing this. So, talked about Acuna, talked about Patrick Kane. I'm going to get into the Lions record real quick. And you guys can tell me I'm wrong. Justin had 11-6. and six. I have 10-7. and seven. Injuries to happen. Bugs is not playing at all. I don't know wh- what's going on with him. But... I think it's really just kind of interesting. Like, why is our starting defensive tackle not playing? So, curious to see how that's going to go. Hopefully, this Lions team wins. I'll say this. I don't think the Lions will win this game, but I think it is going to be a very close game. I think fans are just expecting, you know what? Like, nationwide fans, not Lions fans, but the average fan that lives in California or whatever. You guys know where I'm going with this. It's just, I don't think they expect a close game. Where I do. I think this is going to be a close game. Mahomes doesn't have a true number one target outside of Travis Kelsey. Now, you could say, you know what, Kelsey's the number one. I get that, but I look at receivers and I say to myself, alright, who's the number one? To me, I think it's Sky Moore. I really think it's going to be Sky Moore as the number one target. The reason why is Cradarius Tony always gets hurt. There's always something with him. I could see where you want to make the argument with Valdez Scantling. He's been there for a while. I understand that. But I think it's Sky Moore. I think he's going to have a good year this year. So, overall, Lions 10 7. I think that is enough to win the division. Bears did get better this season. Vikings defense is absolutely terrible. All of their guys left. Madison will have a good year, but we'll see what happens. I just think their defense is terrible. I think the biggest threat to this Lions division is the Bears. I think the Lions have a tough time containing mobile quarterbacks like Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, etc. But I do think this Lions team wins the division. But the team to watch out for, I mean, no one's really talking about them, and I'm scared with Jordan Love because he's looked good. But I'm not... I'm just saying, team to watch out for, not team to be threatened by. I mean, Packers defense is still good. They're still good. If they develop these receivers, Watson, Dobbs, etc., it's going to be interesting to see anyways you know what Justin I'm kind of curious to see what you say about this I look you think the Chiefs are not they're not going to be they're going to be off to a really slow start in my opinion that's why I think this is a good game for the Lions but over under alright here we go 
Over 29 and a half touchdowns for Jared Goff. Over or under. And then we'll get into who leads in every offensive and defensive category for the Lions. But over or under. 29 touchdowns for Jared Goff. I'm going with the under here. I think he'll match. I don't think he'll go over. I think he'll go 29 again. He had 29 last year, I believe. So I'm going to match it and just say he gets 29 again this year. 30's a stretch, but... I think he'll match with 29. I mean, if he had JMO for the full season, I could see, like, hey, that's not really a stretch going with 30. Um, But I think he gets 29. He'll match. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. Alright. So here's my other one. Over, under, St. Brown, six touchdowns. Over, under. I'm going over. I think he gets eight to ten this year. I think last year he was at five and a half or six. He'll get over that. Guy's a beast. That's who I wanted, Justin. If um, so, real quick to give you guys context on fantasy. So, me and Justin are in two leagues. We have a dynasty league and a just regular ESPN league. So, I will give you guys my team and then I'll read you guys Justin's team. So, we'll start with the dynasty league and move on. But I'm gonna start with my Dynasty League team, and you guys can tell me um, how awful it is. I'm not going to read the bench, because it is absolutely a dumpster fire. Um, But to start off, I have Jared Goff at quarterback. This is the Dynasty League. So Goff at quarterback, Saquon and Henry at running back, Tyreek Hill, Diggs, Darren Waller, Metcalf at flex, Alan Lazard at flex, and then Jamal Williams at flex. So we have three flexes. I would have Kamara at flex, but he's suspended. So, yeah. All right. Let's do Justin's team is stacked in the Dynasty League. Someone's doing their grass. I don't know why. All right. Justin's team. He won last year, by the way. I have not won in Dynasty League. I've won in Ned's League. But anyways, Justin has Mahomes, Eckler, David Montgomery, Jamar Chase, Amari Cooper, TJ Hawkinson. DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kurt, Brandon Ayuk. And his bench is just absolutely insane. Alright. Thank you. So, yeah guys, Justin brings up a really good point. Keep in mind that the Dynasty League, we draft once. And all those guys on your team stay the same. So that whole roster... Stays the same. The only way it changes is if you trade the player or release him on waivers. That's the only way it changes. We do rookie drafts as well. So if your team's horrible, you get, let's just say, for example, like Bijan, uh, Gibbs, and all them. Just depending on how bad your team was that year. All right. So we that is my buddy Luke's league. That is the Dynasty League. So... We are going to go to the ESPN League right now. So I have Fields, Chubb, Stevenson, Diggs, Olave, the Joker, they call him. And I'm... The thing is with Dolce, and I'm probably botching his last name, they said that he is going to be the weapon for... The Broncos offense. Now I can see Cortland Sutton having a bounce back here. I think Jerry Judy's out for a while. Um so we'll see what happens. But hopefully this guy has a good year. They call him the Joker for a reason. Terry McLaurin at Flex, Eagles defense, and then Zerling as my kicker. We'll see what happens there. Bench, I have 
Williams. That's Jadavion Williams, not Jameson. Um, but Jadavion Williams, DeAndre Swift, Jacoby Myers, who I think is underrated, Rondell Moore, Tua, Jameson Williams, and then Harris on the Bills. All right. Justin, where is your team? Okay, there it is. So Justin has Anthony Richardson, Travis Etienne, Miles Sanders, Devontae Adams, Amon Ross St. Brown, Cole Komet, Amari Cooper, Saints defense, Matt Gate, and then he has Connor, Judy, Prescott, but I think Zach, okay. He has Charbonnet, and then Quentin Johnson, Mooney, and then Cradarius Tony on his bench. So that is my buddy Ned's league. So that was the 12 team redraft league. So every year in Ned's league, we redraft the team. So we'll see what happens going forward with both leagues this year. All right. So. Who is going to lead in every category for the Lions? We're going to start off with Jared Goff. I mean, he's going to lead in passing yards, touch, like, touchdowns thrown, all that shit. So we already know about Jared Goff. I mean, really nothing to say. Receiving. St. Brown. He'll lead in receiving yards, receptions, all that. And then we'll move over to the defensive side. So, who leads in sacks? Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Hutchinson? Is it going to be James Houston? Is it going to be a surprise? Who do you guys think it will be this year? Curious to see. Because I had my interceptions guy, and I don't think it's going to be Kirby Joseph this year. I'm going to go with... CJ. Mr. Gardner Johnson is who I'm going with this year in terms of interceptions. By the way, he's doing a good job leading this crew. I think Brian Branch will have a good year this year, man. That guy just runs up and down the field. He, he will get you. I think this Lions team, guys, is going to be really good. But the one thing I don't want to sit here and do is overhype this team. I think Hutchinson, in my opinion, I think it's going to be Hutchinson or Houston will lead this team in sacks. But I think Hutchinson, it in terms of sacks, is going to be a little bit under like he's not going to go over the same he might get the same but i think he's going to digress just a little bit in terms of that but i think he's going to have a great year this year so the rumor i'll get to this the rumor is mike evans in the lions no nope don't want mike evans i've said this so many damn times why are we going to pay? Now, keep in mind, Mike Evans is 30. Yeah, the guy is talented. Wants $22.5 million per year. I'm not paying a 30-year-old that. Now, he's making $19 million this year. Cool. Now, if you want him for the year, awesome. But if you want him long-term, no. Nah. Not paying you $22.5. Sorry, dude. What that does... If you re-sign him and pay him the $22.5 million, Sewell is gone. St. Brown's gone. Bye-bye. So there's your young number one wide receiver. There's one of your best offensive linemen. Both gone. If you get Mike Evans. Sorry, Mike. See you later. Don't want him. I understand the talent, but... In my opinion, I'm not paying a 30-year-old receiver $22.5 per year. That's all I got to say. All right. 
Julio Urias, the Dodgers pitcher. Pretty damn good pitcher uh, for the Dodgers. Number two in that rotation. Domestic violence situation going on. Will he get suspended? Probably. And that's a huge loss for the Dodgers because they will be in the postseason and he will probably be out for them. Now, I don't know if he's going to get a fine. I don't know if he's going to be suspended. In my opinion, I think he'll get suspended. Um, But we'll see what happens going forward. I'm sure they're going to investigate the situation. And we'll see a update being reported. All right, this is the one that I found interesting. By the way, guys, if you want to follow me on Twitter, Twitter Wolfpack GIF, we have a Discord going on. So if you guys want the invite to that, um, you guys are more than welcome. A lot of things going on with the podcast. But usually, guys, how I record the podcast is I'm right now I'm live on Twitch. So if you guys want to follow me on that, literally just twitch.tv slash Wolfpack GIF. Um, make sure you guys go follow the crew. Justin and all them. But yeah. So, I have to find this real quick. We're going to talk about Eli Apple. Um. Also, just a little update. Julio Rodriguez is the first player in MLB history with 25-plus homers and 25-plus stolen bases. He's the first player to do that in his first two seasons. The guy's just going to get better and better each year. He's a beast. But that Mariners team is been really weird this season and that's i'll always say that's where the tigers should be all right so eli apple instagram model i've never heard of and i'm not going to try to pronounce her name um had a kid with dolphins cornerback eli apple and eli apple had suggested letting the kid die because he was born at 25 weeks Weighed 1 pound, 12 ounces, and already was undergoing two surgeries. She also claims that Apple is a match, but refuses to give the required 30 MLS of blood to help save his life via a blood transfusion due to a heart problem. Apple's reasoning after leaving her and her unborn child is that he, he has a... Uh, a problem, and she is the sixth woman he's got pregnant in three years, and others just, okay, all right, I'm not going to read more into this, but yeah, I mean, what a, what a piece of shit, man. Honestly, I hated Eli Apple. I hate him as a player. I hate him even more as a human being. So, yeah. When he was on the Saints, man. Jesus, Mary Joseph. But, yeah. Just an absolute piece of shit. Um, Last thing I am going to talk about, and I found a video of this. I don't know if it has music. Um... But it's about Eric Gagne, and I found it really interesting. Viewer discretion is advised while I play this. Alright, so you guys tell me. Let's talk about the biggest rat and trait leader to the Dodgers in history. Eric was undoubtedly one of the greatest until he decided to become a bitch. And they go to the protection of Eric Gagne. 75 to 80 consecutive saves. It all started when he admitted to doing steroids the last three years of his career, but he didn't stop there. He accused 80% of his former teammates of doing steroids with him, and one of those ex-players did not take the rumor so kindly, Adrian Beltre called him out, even though he actually detained him from beating up an ump. That should have been a sign that Eric was a crackhead given the reputation of Canadians as being kind and well-mannered. This incident happened after Eric was taken deep by now Yankees manager Aaron Boone. 
he proceeded to hit the next batter, and it got him tossed, bringing out the roid rage within. Eric ended up signing with the eventual champion Red Sox in 2007 and reuniting with his friend from the Dodgers, Alex Cora. And here is where shit hits the fan for me. In 2018, when the Dodgers were in the World Series against Cora and the Red Sox, little balls, Eric goes out of his way and reaches out to Cora, explaining how they can beat the Dodgers, and he would like to volunteer to fix the pitching staff. Sure enough, Eric is successful, and the rest is history. All right, so I just found that to be really interesting. That's Eric Gagne. He was an elite-level closer for the Dodgers. So you guys can let me know your thoughts on that. But anyways, last thing I want to talk about. Now, for those of you guys that don't follow me on Twitter, this was just funny. This is how I knew I was getting trolled. So, this guy posted that he had Henrik Lundqvist as the greatest goalie of all time. Now, to me, there's only three goalies. Only three. Actually, I'll go five. I'll go five goalies. Now, you can go two of the 80s air, and then I got one. Ken Dreisaitl never gets talked about, and I think he should. Guy, Go look at Ken Dreisaitl's stats. Underrated goalie. But to me, there's only three. Hashik, Wa, Broder. Those three. The greatest goalie of all time, in my opinion, is Dominic Hasek. Of all time. Go look at his stats on Hockey Reference and tell me I'm wrong. I think he has the best save percentage as well. He was an absolute beast. And then he digressed a little bit. Keep in mind, he was playing in Europe. He came over to the States... When he was 27, I believe. Who knows how good Hashik could have been if he came to the States earlier. That's all I got to say. I think Dominic Hashik's the greatest goalie ever. He's the GOAT goalie of the NHL. Now, Vasilevsky, he might get in that conversation. If you don't know who that is, that is Tampa Bay's goalie. I think he'll be in the top three. I don't know about GOAT status. But I think he'll be in that 5-10 to 10 category in terms of goalie. So we'll see what happens, guys. But anyways, if there's a certain topic you want me to talk about, let me know. By the way, guys, uploads will be on Sundays. The reason I'm recording this is because the Lions are playing a Thursday night game. By the way, I think they're going to lose that game. It's going to be a close game. Hopefully, they prove me wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. Also, what we're going to do, not this week, but going forward, is I will be streaming when the Lions game is on. We'll sit here, talk about the game. So, if you guys want to join me on Twitch, talk some Lions football. Not this week, but going forward. Let's do it. Let's do it. But yeah, guys, anyways, my goal is to hit Twitch Partner. You got to average 75 viewers per stream. So if you guys want to help me, you guys know some friends that enjoy video games and sports, send them over my way. I would really appreciate it, guys. This is something that I love to do, talking sports, playing video games on the side. It's just a lot of fun. But yeah. So Lions, I think, are going to lose this game. But man, I would love to be proven wrong. I would love that more than anything. But the overall goal is you got to start out 1-1. One and one. you got to beat Seattle in Week 2. So we'll see what happens going forward, guys. As always, appreciate the support, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.